David Brooks wrote an article, uh, I think it was yesterday, he wrote an article that one can only call, oh, propaganda for our current economic system. The title of his article was, um, or not was, but the title of his article is The Power of American Capitalism. And in that article, he's tried to explain why everybody has got it wrong. The economy has been doing, unlike other economies around the world, it's been doing so great over the last several decades. And why is there a pessimism in America? Why is it that Americans believe that somehow capitalism is not working for them? How could they possibly believe it when we look at all the curves, the amount of money generated by our economy, the amount of the amount of people that are employed, the amount of productivity that we have in the economy, that the people that are millennials and Gen Zs somehow have nine to ten thousand dollars more in 2019 in real dollars more so than the baby boomers or the folks that came just before the baby boomers. In other words, things are great. And what it shows is David Brooks and all these elitist uh, hosts and elitist writers just don't get it. And they want to, uh, I think most of them just don't get it because they look at the top line numbers and don't look at the underlying figures, right? I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Listen to the Democrats when Republicans are in office, or Republicans when Democrats are in office, they'll all tell you, oh, the country's fading, it's collapsing. No, uh, comparatively, from 1990 to now, you point out our economy is actually stronger. I mean, it's become an even bigger, more powerful machine across the globe. Yeah. And, the, you know, if you look at listen to Donald Trump, we're in American carnage. The country's in a crisis. We're in the verge of a civil war. But then you look at the data, you realize that's just not an accurate picture of where we are. As you said, GDP growth, you know, it's pretty steadily up. It's not what we'd like, but it's strong enough. But then you look underneath that uh, and you see that uh, productivity, American workers are not only more productive than workers around the world, but getting even more productive than they were. Uh, and then you look at uh, our education levels. Uh, we are pretty good in the number of people we send through college. You look at the number of skilled immigrants that come to this country. And then the most surprising thing to me was we think of millennials and Gen Z as a generation that's really had it rough. Uh, you know, low wages, high housing costs. And that was true after the financial crisis. But in the last five years, Gen Z and millennials are now having the highest wage growth of any age group. And they're about or ahead of where boomers were, where Gen X was, where the silent generation was. So the dynamism of the American economy is picking up people who were suffering, which is the young. And because of that dynamism, we have we can afford to have a more generous welfare state and we're increasing the amount of money we're spending on social support. And so we can cushion things for people on the bottom. Yeah, and, and David, you also compare us uh, to uh, European countries. If you, if you look at, uh, again, uh, earnings, GDP per capita, and again, uh, comparatively to where we were in 1990, uh, when the economy was supposedly so much stronger and, and before uh, demagogues on both sides talked about how America was collapsing and how capitalism was dying. Uh, just the fact is, comparatively, we're doing much better now against some of the, well, the G7 countries even than we did 30 years ago. Yeah, and we have just a slightly different model. I've lived in Europe, and, and they have a lot of positives to their models. They have a lot of social support. Uh, they have a, probably more secure health care systems than we do. But their disadvantage of that model is they don't have as much dynamism and growth. And so what we're trying to do in, in this country, and I think Joe Biden is part of this, is trying to find the right balance to have the dynamism and growth, but also to have the right kind of social support. And if you look at what Biden has passed, I think it's he's trying to increase the support without crushing the dynamism. And that's the great skill that Americans, I think, on the center left and the center right have been contributing to. My worry is that we have people on the extremes who are really not, they have lost faith in capitalism altogether. And, you know, if you go to Tucker Carlson, he's attacking capitalism as part of a great betrayal. And so the Republican Party, which used to be like for free enterprise, <laughs> is not so much anymore. Uh, and so these declinists, these people who think we're declining, are proposing policies that will actually believe, produce 
what they pretend to be trying to avoid. Every, everybody across the world, you know, uh, it seems that that, that, that monarchs, uh, you, 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 sheiks, you name it, they send their kids to America to educate their children. Uh, and so, David, if this is what declinism looks like, give me more of it. We're doing pretty damn well. Yeah, and we, you know, we all, the three of us, we spend a lot of our time focusing on problems, which we should. We should expose the problems of the country. But I think sometimes we ignore how strong things are. I've decided to spend three hours a day thinking about artificial intelligence, because I think it's just a gigantic thing. That's all happening here. Uh, and the innovation is happening here. The vaccines happened here. And I think what puzzles me and what I think about is if you got all these underlying things that are going well, why are we in such a bad mood? Why do so many people think the country's on the wrong track? Why do so many people think the coming generations won't have the advantages that people in my generation had? And I think there's just, some of it is frankly our fault in the media. We're a little too negative probably. Some of it is just a, a wall of cynicism that is built up. And I was talking to an administration official about this yesterday that, you know, there a lot of good things have been happening and credit is not being given uh, to those who've passed major pieces of legislation the last couple of years. And it's just this wall that, oh, things are terrible, terrible, terrible. Nobody's helping us out. Uh, and somehow something has to be done to reverse or puncture through the wave of cynicism and disillusionment and distrust that I think is not actually reflective of reality. Here's what's important with what David Brooks says. David Brooks wants you to believe like, hey, those millennials are doing better than the people than than the folks their age at that time. Not particularly true, because at that time we didn't have the the healthcare costs that we had today. We didn't have all the different high costs that we had today that requires a lot more money. But it's beyond that. It's even deeper. We didn't have the lack of future the the, the, the future savings that that other generation could have because of the cost structure that you had then. But then there's another magical thing. You would go into TikTok and you'd see a millennial get interviewed. Hey, they're going down the streets of San Francisco or the streets of these other places. See what are people earning? And they usually go in a professional district or whatever. And you'd hear a 25 year old said, well, I made $250,000 last year. You'd have a nurse says, I made $200,000 last year. And you'd have all these folks that, say how much they make and it wow it sounds great but if they're making that kind of money and the average is only nine thousand dollars or so more than they made back then it tells a story that nobody that these elitists don't quite say if i have 10 if i have 10 workers and i have ten thousand dollars and i increase the wages by over the years that it's now twenty thousand dollars for those 10 workers it seems like they all have a 100% gain, right? But if that $10,000, 9000 of that additional $10,000 went to one person, then the average seems pretty good. The median is horrific. And that is what has happened in America. Yes, there are people that have done phenomenally well and went average with everybody else. It seems like they're doing fine. But the fact that 80% of Americans, if they have a bill, that's 400 and something dollars in that particular month, that it really screws their budget, they're in dire straits, tells you where we are. Yes, efficiency is great. Yes, uh, some people are making a lot more money and when the averages come down, it seems like folks are doing better. But the reality is, America is sour, not because they want to be sour. Americans are upset not because they want to be upset. Americans are upset because they are not doing progressively well. And when they see what's left for themselves, it's not all that much. So these elitists can look at the top line numbers as much as they want. They can do whatever they want as far as saying things should be good. But when you go into a palacio de guetos de barrios and even in these different communities, and see what people have to do to survive. It's a different story. And it's a story that can be quantified. If the elitists 
wanted to learn and quantify what's happening to the average American citizen, they could, and then enlightening Americans and allowing them the opportunity to elect those progressives that will change these policies is the answer. But David Brooks says, oh, those folks on the left or those folks on the right, they don't know what they're talking about. Because if we were to adopt those things that those lefties want, how much, how bad would things get? Well, he's actually wrong. It is what the current system that creates wealth disparity and income, income disparity right now, that is what's destroying the morale of this country. And that's why people are not only in a sour mood, that's why people want a real change. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.